I spent 100 days in Better Minecraft, a mod pack that adds a plethora of dragons, amazing new structures, and this guy. Yes, I'm gonna be doing all of this side by side with Winter, my goofy half. So sit back, relax, and laugh as we survive 100 days in Better Minecraft. Did you really just jump into the lot? You're so stupid. Alright, look who I brought into Better Minecraft, and he's already figured out how to sit. Now this is day one in our adventure with Winter in Better MC, so obviously we just got some wood. Then we already used that to get our stone tools, and now we're off on our adventure. The first thing that we located was a gatekeeper's house where Winter stole his bed. He's probably gonna die to zombies now that I think about it. And honestly, the only other thing interesting that happened was us finding another gatekeeper's house where I get to keep the bed this time. However, we basically stayed the night here, cooked up some food, and now we'll be on our journey on day two. Which started off with us finding an underground village. When Winter decided to actually explore for loot, I took to killing the iron golems, as we haven't gone mining yet and a bit of iron can help out in the adventure. However, I've recently realized how cocky I am, and I almost died. Somehow though, the iron golem decided not to do my entire health bar of damage, which is weird because I'm not wearing any armor, but that somehow saved me and now we're continuing to play the rest of these 100 days. I also decided to look around the place for some stuff, but there wasn't anything too interesting in underground villages other than the villagers who aren't going to really help me that much. Then once we were done with this area, we found a house. However, it wasn't a house for long because Winter stepped on a pressure plate and it blew up. Although we still decided to stay the night here because, well, where else are we going to go for shelter? On day three, Winter and I found a campsite village? I honestly don't know what this is, but Better Minecraft has a ton to offer, so we took it with a grain of salt, not knowing exactly what's going to be here. We started pillaging, maybe we're the pillagers at this point, and ended up getting pretty good sets of armor, at least some iron and decently enchanted leather. From there, I also found a map, which is an illager fort map? I, I honestly don't know what this is, but we're gonna go check it out. Which is what we did next. We just headed one direction and we'll find this thing eventually, right? That's how maps work. Actually, we were decently close to it, probably within like a thousand or so blocks, so it didn't take too long to get there. However, once we arrived days later, we realized that this is the better Minecraft version of a woodland mansion. So, yeah. That's not gonna happen right now. Which means Winter decided to mark it down on his map and we'll come back to it later. If somehow by the end of these 100 days we want to take on a woodland mansion, we'll come back for it and we'll probably find more. However, right now Iron Gear is not going to get us through this little mission. Before we can find a place to settle down, we ran into a mushroom village. However, the village folk here don't seem to like visitors, so we had to fight our way through. Within the loot pile of this place, I was able to get an enchanted diamond sword, which basically carried me for a super long time. And after we left the purple forest, we found a beautiful river with some land we thought we could make into our own. From that moment on, we started planning out a gigantic wall that would encapsulate a village. One that we would be able to make throughout these 100 days. But before any of that can happen, we need to increase our inventory sizes. In this mod, you can get a backpack which allows you to carry way more items than you're supposed to. Unfortunately, to craft this thing, we're gonna need a ton of leather and string. Two things we literally don't have right now. So we waited till night to farm some spiders, which allowed Winter to make both of us backpacks for two extra rows of inventory space. But while completing that task, I was able to discover a crypt full of zombies. Now these things are notorious for being absolutely overrun while still having some decent loot to them. So Winter and I journeyed into the depths to see what we could find. Even when we were rewarded with some decent diamond tools and books, nothing really compared to the levels we got off of fighting the zombies. Which tended to include mass hordes of them, some being blown up by creepers. Although, I'd say the real journey came from how long we were lost trying to get back to the surface. Apparently, we were too stubborn to just mine up. At one point, we even found a mine shaft instead of the sun. But that gave me valuable time to gather a ton of string from cave spiders to hopefully upgrade our backpacks in the future. And once returning home, I wasn't even sure if the trip was that worth it. Okay, well, to be fair, Winter found the cooler stuff, so I guess that's kind of why I thought that. But I guess a dragon egg and a couple books for your boy wasn't too bad either. Oh, did I not mention that before? Oh yeah, I'm gonna hatch a dragon. On days 11 through 13, I started laying out the spires of our wall for the town. Before I could even do that, however, I had to clear out a ton of the forest. The benefit to this is that I'm gonna have a ton of oak and birch wood to use, and the con, I don't think I'm ever gonna use it because I really like spruce. Once it was all gone, I started laying out individual spires. I know it really just looks like spruce pillars for now, but that's only because I haven't fully laid out the spires yet. I needed to gauge the distance between each one of them, 
before they were fully created. Once each one of them was set in stone, I worked on the design of each spire, making the middle regular spruce and the outside of it strip spruce. Of course, I added fences to the top to create a bit of a point as well. I did this over and over until each one of them was finally done and we have a bit of an outline of where the wall is going to be. While I was doing that, Winter was gathering stone. This being, I could put a stone brick wall in between each section, obviously it's not going to be like a holographic wall. We will need to build it and Winter's stone is going to help with that. Once it was all smelted, I started laying down the stone brick. I was only able to lay out a few different sections before we ran out of stone completely. However, I think it's actually going pretty well. Oh, and during that time, our dragons hatched. Now we don't have the fish to feed them, so we just kind of put them on leads and hope that they wouldn't break it and wander away. But once we have the fish, we will be able to tame them and have dragons. The next day, Winter went ahead and started fishing so he could tame the dragons while I went and ate. Yes, I was offline for day 15, but I trusted Winter to get the stuff for the dragons. When I came back on day 16, Winter was nowhere to be found. Apparently, he had discovered a village a little bit outside of ours. I went to go visit him and he had tamed both dragons. Which means my Aether Dragon is now in the hands of him, and I don't have a dragon to ride. It's alright though, cause that means the next dragon that he or I find, I get to claim. Plus, Aether Dragons aren't my favorite. They're fast, but they don't look as cool as others, so I'm interested to see what I get next. From there, I went back to working on the wall. Am I working on the wall? I mean multiple, multiple days of working on this wall. I first wanted to finish up the entrance. I didn't really know how to make a diagonal archway, so it took a lot of attempts. I figured adding some spruce would make it look a lot better. And I took some inspiration from some of my one block builds. If I remember correctly, the chest room had an interesting design that could kind of work here because it was a semi-diagonal build. And once it was done, I had an entrance that looked pretty decent. I'm not saying it's like castle worthy, but it's definitely worth for the wall. After that, I finished up a few more layers before I ran out of stone once more. So instead of waiting for Winter to go get it himself, I decided I'd do it. I went to a little area and broke a ton more cobble, which is still probably not even going to be enough. And then I, I waited for it to smelt, because what else am I going to do? Ride a dragon? I don't have one of those. You know what? I'm never going to let him live this down. However, we went back straight to working on the wall for three more days. It's crazy how much time it takes me to just build a single wall, but I guess there was some detail elements and it was quite big. I wish I could spend a ton more time showing you how this entire thing was built, but seriously, we're on day 21 and I, I haven't even gotten to the cool stuff of Better MC yet, so let's just skip past this part. Next up for the town, I had to get rid of all of these trees and terraform the land. Winter and I aren't going to get anything done here if we don't have great places to plant crops or build houses. So once all the trees were removed, I enlisted his help in clearing out this area over here and then making it kind of like a downwards hill. This will most likely serve as our farming area and will allow us to have a ton of crops. Now that we're truly done around these parts, we can start doing some upgrades. Which means Winter and I are going to go on a mining adventure. We went a little bit of ways away from base trying to find any caves, but that didn't seem likely. So we just dug down in hopes for anything. After I heard a bit of an explosion below me, it turns out Winter found a mineshaft. Unfortunately, it didn't have a ton of anything for us, so we just decided to mine down into the deep dark. However, the way that we did it, it, it didn't work for some odd reason. And funny enough, Winter's headset button, yes, the one that controls him muting or not, actually popped up with a menu of how to get to the deep dark, which we found out for no reason at all. So if we're gonna go down there, we have to craft something special, which means it looks like we're just gonna be strip mining for a while. Thankfully, diamonds weren't too far away as Winter and I were able to find caves while mining. Of course, we split up and I got the first set of diamonds because I'm just better, but I'm sure he's not too far behind. And basically from that point on, diamonds just started flooding in. Apparently I was the lucky one, however, because Winter was getting absolutely stiffed by the caves. Thankfully though, over time, I was able to get a ton of diamonds that we could share. So if he needed diamond gear, I'd be there to supply. And once I was out of the caves, I believe I left with around 60 diamonds, which is probably enough to supply a small army. And by army, I mean Winter and I, because that's all we got. Anyway, now we should be able to at least make new diamond tools and refresh our armor. Now that we're home, I still have a little bit more base work to do to the wall. It looks a little plain when entering, so I want to add a little bit of spikes to the stone parts. So to do that, I grabbed some walls, slabs, and fences. However, before anything could happen, Winter arrived dragging along two cows. And by dragging, I mean flying. Yes, this man just flew two cows on leads over to our base, landed them in water, and now I have to set up a pen for them. All my planning work just to do something for this man, oh boy. And after he stole my dragon, what a meanie. I'm also now realizing that I forgot to mention I got a fire dragon. 
Oh boy, I'm a bad YouTuber. Anyway, that'll come into play later. Right now I have wall work to do. So as I mentioned before, I grabbed the slabs and fences and walls and just started placing them a little coherently. Again, basically it's just for a little bit of diversity so it's not one flat top wall. Oh yeah, and while doing that, Winter and I decided to hatch some water dragons. Which means I'm gonna have two elemental dragons, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, now that the wall's done, it looks really good and we can move on to the inside builds. And the first one we're gonna be dealing with is a farm. Now, we have a large area, so I figure we're gonna use that hill we created earlier to make a gigantic wheat farm. But with that mass amount of wheat needed, we have to get a lot of seeds. So to do that, I flew out to a pillager windmill. Now, this is a build that Winter found a little while ago that is covered in wheat. Oh yeah, I also used my fire dragon to get out there, who I named Gus, by the way. So if you ever see me flying the fire dragon, just know I'm riding Gus. Wait. Okay, anyway, I decided to gather all of their wheat, and yes, every single field I gathered while they just sat and watched. Absolute idiots. Can't believe they just let me steal from them like that. However, once I had everything I needed, it was back home to start the farm. Don't underestimate how long that took. They had a lot of wheat. All right, so I just realized I've got to have some sort of condition that makes me just sidetrack because I know I just collected everything for the farms, but I'm looking at all my videos and I don't even do the farm for like another 20 days. What am I thinking? Oh yeah, and in that clip, I just enchanted a silk touch pickaxe. Apparently, I focused a little bit more on the houses that Winter and I are going to be building, so I went and gathered spruce, which I'll reiterate once again is the absolute best wood hands down. And once I had everything I needed, I went back home, and I guess I could probably start in the house, but I'm gonna get sidetracked, I guarantee it. See what I mean? I'm going to the nether. How does that have anything to do with building a house? I guess while I'm here and I'm going for levels, because I, I honestly don't, I'm assuming, yeah, there we go, I'm mining quartz, okay, cool. Oh wait, I'm here for a reason, I need quartz for my house, oh, I'm so stupid, okay. I'm gathering quartz so I can get levels to get fortune to mine quartz. That's the whole goal of why I'm in the nether right now. And obviously, since I have a Silk Touch pickaxe, I'm just collecting the quartz, which means I'm gonna bring them back to the overworld and slowly mine them later. And since this is better MC, there is a ton of different biomes in the nether, but I normally stuck to this greenish one because it has a really high rate for quartz. And once I had around 10 stacks of quartz ore to my name, I headed back to the overworld. At base, I stacked up quartz and started mining with a regular pickaxe to actually get the levels from it. My goal was to get a level 30 and get fortune, so that all of these quartz ore aren't gonna go to waste and I'm gonna get like one per. However, my first enchantment at level 30 decided to not give me what I wanted, and instead I have to go back to mining more quartz. And once I successfully returned to level 30, I enchanted once more to get a fortune 2 efficiency 3 unbreaking 3 pickaxe. Which to be fair isn't exactly what I wanted, I still really wanted a fortune 3, but I guess I can actually start mining these now. Although I was super unsatisfied with the efficiency level. So I slaved away at mining quartz, disenchanted some pickaxes, found a couple books, and eventually I was able to make this pickaxe efficiency 4. Now was it worth it? Probably, but did I really need it right now? Not necessarily, however I'm a bit of a stickler and I really wanted a good pickaxe. Also, since I'm not looking at the footage right now, I believe I made it fortune 3, I really can't remember. I think I did though, so I've got a good pickaxe for quartz now at least. Oh, and during that time, Winter had started on his house, which, I mean, to be fair, looks right like, like a suburban house, maybe, but um, it'll look better later. Honestly, I'm just hoping I can finish this quartz up sometime soon so I can start my own house. Which, don't remind me, because I think I forgot to record part of it. I'm not looking forward to having to edit that. Anyway, no matter what I've done to myself, it's house time. If you've ever seen my 1.18 modded terrain video with Winter, you know the kind of house design I'm about to do. I actually created a little village inspired by it in that video, which I really wish I continued that series. Anyway, past mistakes. So the goal of this thing was to do a plus sign house that wasn't exactly symmetrical. I honestly don't know how to describe this thing. It's a really cool mythical house, but other than that, I've got nothing. I used quartz and spruce wood on the bottom. Of course I stripped it because there is no way I'm using regular spruce with actual quartz. That is just blasphemy. Then when it came to the top part, I extruded out a little bit, used oak on the top and spruce on the top instead of quartz, just to give it a little bit of diversity. And then once the top was complete, I started working on a little bit of the outside layer so that it meshes well with the quartz. However, this is when I'm pretty sure I stopped recording. Unfortunately, I believe the roofs were done off camera, so this is where we're at. Although it does look really good, so I mean, it, plus side, it, it turned out well. Now all I have to do is go on the journey to find the roof, which is going to be terracotta, so you know how long that adventure is going to take. So I hopped on old Gus and just started flying. And flying, and flying, and flying, and flying. However, since my luck is absolute dog doo-doo, I am never going to find the mesa I really want, so um... I'll just cut to it. 
Yes, look at me mining my old terracotta. I'm gonna gather enough so I don't have to worry about it again, hopefully for a while, because this is like thousands upon thousands of blocks away. But honestly, the only interesting part is that I got here. So, uh, yeah. Although, while I was in the call with Winter heading home, I I'm pretty sure he didn't like that I was gone for a long time. I mean, I didn't like that I was gone for a long time. It was like 10 days I was gone or something. Wait, can I math? Carry the one or the two. No, it was not 10 days. Okay, well, it was like six, but still, it's a long time. Anyway, now that we're home, we can finally finish up the base, which, trust me, I've wanted to do for a very long time. It's just that terracotta eludes me. It's the one thing in better Minecraft that I always want that I can never have. I just want to hold it to give it to me. However, with it, I was able to finish off the roof of my house. I used pink and magenta terracotta because I like to mix it up a bit on the roof. And it was also something I used in previous builds, so I mean, I, I just had to reuse it. And now that we have the shell of the house done, I have to work on the interior. Which normally isn't my favorite part, but since I've done a couple builds like this before, I have a design in mind. Plus, by the end of it, it'll look really nice. First thing I did was take out the floor and replace it. Obviously, I'm not going to be standing on dirt the whole time. Then I added in the second floor, because I'm not seven feet tall and need this high of a roof. After that, I roughed in a kitchen, which honestly, a little quaint, but it'll work. I definitely could have gone bigger with this thing, maybe even put it up top, but I like it in this little cubby. Then across of the kitchen, I added in a work of art with bookshelves and staircases. Not gonna lie, I just didn't really know what to put here, however, it does look good. So I'll kind of skip ahead here because I don't want to show you everything as the next day Winter and I did a tour of our houses. So what I will say is I just finished up sorting all of my supplies, which means that all of the rest can either be burnt or dumped into Winter's pile. And we now both have two amazing houses to live in. The first one we went to was Winter's, where he showed me a gigantic storage system he had hooked up to one section. This guy has like 20 chests down here, all hooked up to one little box. Which I guess will keep him organized for once, so I'm not too mad. The rest of the house, however, is kind of like a normal Minecraft player. He's got all of his essentials, just not decorated, which I kind of expected. He does have an upstairs, though, with a desk, so maybe he'll make Minecraft content, who knows. And now onto my house, which was a really nice opening. We've got a kitchen, table, some barrels, books, everything you need down here. I mean, overall, it looks really good. That was my goal. I, I don't have a lot of usefulness stuff down here. All of it's up here where I have an enchantment table, all of my chests, and my bed. I'm pretty much going to be spending my life up here. However, I mean, at least it looks good. So yeah, that's pretty much my house. Overall, his is definitely built for functionality and mine is built to please the camera. You guys vote down below in the comments which one you like better. After that, it was time to start work on those farms I mentioned a little while ago. So I went through the area, added in water and lanterns for obvious water sources for the wheat seeds, and then realized that I never picked up any of the wheat seeds. So that time I went and gathered the, the seeds, um, I gathered like maybe a stack of them, so I was able to plant some, but I guess my main focus back then was the wheat for some reason, because I guess thousands upon thousands of wheat is needed. Why did I need so much wheat? Anyway, that basically means that I'm going to go have to find another one of those farms and take all of the pillager stuff again. But hey, it's all for a good cause, fighting uh, the starvation in our little colony. There's only two of us, so it shouldn't be that hard. I'm gonna put this in terms you guys understand. I am now officially a robber. I am committing a crime against these people. But that's okay, because I'm doing it with a friend. Winter's here too, we're both committing double crime. Then with that, we were able to make the farm, okay? We, we now have a gigantic space for farming. And obviously, I kind of skipped over a lot of the stuff that happened, but I mean, how many times do you need to see me hoe the ground and Winter place it behind me? Like, I, I, I wait. Anyway, go to the next day. Go, go now, go, move on. The Nether! What a great place to get levels from and skip over the last clip. So we're back here, you know, in hell, just doing our, our boy thing, our g man thing. We're gathering levels for enchants. Obviously, we both have diamond armor sets that we're trying to max out. I think in every Minecraft world I have ever played, I've never worn plain diamond armor because it just feels like a sin. So I always wait until it's like at least all prot three before I wear it. It all has to have unbreaking like 100%. I, I basically have to have a max set before I put it on to me. I think I'm a little bit high maintenance. However, apparently winter's the same way. So we are here back in the nether trying to get more levels. And uh, to be fair, we have both kind of drained our spawn out of levels. So we just, so we went to separate areas from here and just, just try to get as many levels as possible. Plus if we stuck together, I'm pretty sure we'd end up not getting any levels because I would take them or then he would take them and then I would take them. It'd take forever. 
but I return home with a massive 46 levels. Although all of that instantly left me as I started enchanting my gear. I got Unbreaking 3, Protection 3 on my leggings, only Protection 3 on my boots, and only Protection 3 on my helmet. So I basically got rid of the enchants on the helmet and boots and tried again. However, this time I got Feather Falling on the boots and uh, Fire Protection, so I don't really need that, but uh, Feather Falling I'm definitely keeping. I made a new helmet in hopes that I would get protection for it, and um, I, I didn't. Although I was able to make my pants prop 4 as well as add protection 3 to the boots later on, so now it's really just the helmet I have to worry about. And now on to a barn, something these cows finally deserve. First I evened out the area, I don't really like building on uneven ground. After that I laid out a small design to make the barn with, however instead of doing something simple I worked on a bit of a castle, well at least part of one. I really just like using these types of towers. Once that was done I worked on the wood design which was mainly just the roof. Afterward I moved on to the exterior walls and a small entrance. This is slowly looking better than my own house. To finish off the build, I had to get the cows in the barn just as Winter's forest dragon, Greeny Meanie, was eating the entire lot. Like what the heck? Control your dragon! Anyway, I was able to successfully get the cows in the pen and everything went back to normal. Until I saw that. What on God's green earth is that? Alright, looks like I'm gonna help Winter with the windmill he wanted to make. Obviously it needs some work, but with Winter and I going at it together, it only took another day. And now it looks amazing, so much better than before. So one thing Winter and I wanted to do in these 100 days is set up for 200 days. Or hopefully 1,000 days. Yes, this series is one we plan to do for 1,000 days, so if you guys enjoy it, maybe like the video. Anyway, what I was getting at is this place will hopefully have a town full of villagers one day. So to lay out a small plan for it, I spread out a huge amount of stone, making a platform with docks and many possible house plans. It took a long time to get this much stone, but once it was done, it was all worth it. It may look dumb right now because it's literally just stone, but as soon as it's a full town in 200 or 300 days, it'll look amazing. Now that some building has been done, it's finally time to finish off my armor so I can be full diamond. I'm sick and tired of this iron. To do just that, I headed right back into the nether, a place we had already drained of resources, but I was able to find enough quartz to secure over 37 levels. Then it was time to enchant. My helmet and sword were the two things I really needed to do well with. My sword got sharpness 3 knockback and my helmet didn't do much better, however I re-rolled it and got prot 3, which means all of my gear at least has protection on it. The last thing I need to do is get unbreaking for my boots, as that's super needed. Also, throughout these 100 days I've been secretly filling up Winter's 20 chest organization hub with seeds and wheat from our farm. Since I don't actually have a picture or footage of a future update to show you what really happened, by the end of this 100 days, my mans has combined 20,000 wheat and seeds in those chests. And now only around two of those chests are full of empty space, meaning I've completely depleted his storage system. Oh, let's hope he doesn't watch this video. Now it was time to hunt for the stronghold, or at least the stuff to get there. The first thing Winter needed was levels, as we both still don't technically have max gear. So to the nether we went, and levels were our mission. By the end of our travels, I'd gotten another 39 levels, and him the same which means I should finally be able to max out my gear. Thankfully, I wasn't stiffed by the table this time and got the unbreaking boots I needed. I combined all of what I had and now I have a god set. Also, I gave Winter the extra gear, which to be honest was like Prop 4 Debstrider boots or something like that. Then we went back to the nether for of course blaze rods and hopefully some pearl trades. I found an amazing looking fortress with my dragon and started to grind some blazes. However, once I finished up the slaying and it was time to leave, my dragon that I parked there is gone. I believe we have just witnessed the death of a fire dragon, in the nether no less. But maybe the blazes just missed hitting me and hit him, which kind of really sucks because I lost Gus, my friend, my riot weight. However, I pushed on grabbing all of our gold to get some pearls from Piglin trades. I made my way to a manor we had found earlier, blocked off some men, and waited for the trades. Eventually, I got around 11 pearls and headed back home because we still had some at base we could use, which means we should have enough to get to the stronghold. Time to push on. I threw an eye and we headed off to find this stronghold. A little while of flying later, we did end up upon it. Once we entered the stronghold, we were caught a bit off guard by how amazing it looked in here. Once again, Better Minecraft has so much to offer, other than a map to the portal room. A little bit of searching later, we found the portal room. I put in the eyes, and now it was just us and a dragon. Did you really just jump into the lot? You're so stupid. First, we took out the crystals, which really should be harder. Then, every time it perched, we did massive amount of damage to the dragon, killing it in a non-record time. We aren't dream, after all. 
Combined, we also now have over 100 levels of EXP, so that'll help with enchanting later. After that, it was end city hunting, which is a massive task apparently, as this end is so much better than the boring one you see in normal Minecraft. Upon entering, we found the end's version of a stronghold, however, I wasn't too happy. Normally these places are useless, but since this is Winter's first time here, we went in. Right off the bat, we found an elytra. Like, how? Although, since we didn't have villagers, I was more interested in finding the end city's elytras, as those are already max enchanted. So after finishing up the looting here, we left. With a lot of goodies, I might add. Now it was on to the real adventure, elytra hunting, with my backup goal of getting 100% mending gear from the cities to combine with my current armor. The first city I found had a blimp, meaning I now have an elytra that won't break anytime soon. I went and grabbed the elytra right away to replace the one I was currently using. Then I went to the real city as I'm going to be in need of these shulkers it has to offer. Which was basically all this city was useful for. The next thing I found was an end golem's home, a boss that had crazy hands. As soon as I found him, I got the heck out of there. Not worth dying right now. We might be fighting him in 200 days. I found another end city in hopes to get winter in elytra, but I had no such luck. There wasn't a blimp with this one, but a ton of loot. Something we love to see, especially since I'm in need of that mending gear I mentioned earlier, which was plentiful in these types of structures. I moved on still in hopes of receiving more elytras, upon which I found one in a large city for looting. I grabbed the elytra for winter and then proceeded to steal from the inhabitants. I was able to get nice loot, but I was still in desperate need of mending pants, one thing that I hadn't gotten yet. Although at this point I'm willing to just leave after how long I've been in here. However, a saving grace one mending pants with a curse on it. Now it wasn't curse of binding, so I didn't hate it, but I just don't like the red. It bothers me so much. However, at this point, I have a feeling I'm just gonna take the curse. From there, I returned home to organize my inventory and give Winter his gift, which means we both have working elytras with max enchants now. I just kind of realized that that makes the dragon's decorations now. It's okay, we'll still use them after I figure out what happened to Gus. And with shulkers full of crap, this is gonna take a minute. Honestly, my organization skills could use some work, but maybe that was just because I had so much stuff. So I'll just, um, I'll just kind of skip to the next day. Now look, things are dying down a bit. We wanted to end off with a bang, so I hatched an ice dragon, which will technically be replacing Gus. However, I'll never forget him. After that, we sought the largest L in history. We had collected enough heads to fight two withers and one of the beacons. However, something really, really bad happened. We placed a wither and nothing happened. Multiple time. Nothing would work. Not only did we go to multiple biomes, we also went to different dimensions to see what we could do, but Better Minecraft did not want it to happen. If you can explain to me why we can place all of this stuff down and not spawn a wither, please comment it down below. I would love to see why I'm so dumb. I definitely want to fight these things and way more in 200 days, but that technically concluded 100 days. We just took the largest L I've ever seen. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. To be honest, I'll give you all a like goal of like 10k likes for 200 days. I know you guys can hit the goal and I really want to do the 200 days, so yeah, have a great rest of your day, see you in the next one.